Hello everyone and thanks for watching Fast Track Tutorials. In this quick tutorial we will go over on how to create a basic plaster material using Substance Designer and on how to render it in Marmoset Toolback. This tutorial will come in two parts. Now please note that this tutorial is actually part of a much larger course. This course has not yet been released but I'm just telling you this because sometimes I might make references to the actual course and then you might get a little bit confused. But the general techniques are still here and I hope that you enjoy it. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And I'm going to get started with a normal map like this. So we want to go ahead and start by creating some noise. And we can take it from there. Uh, maybe some of this streaking effect that you can see over here might also look quite interesting. So let's go ahead and grab this one. And I'm going to have a look. So since it's only a normal map, we are just going to basically create a bunch of different noise bits. I'm going to get started with some bass noise, which is just going to be some white noise. Add a quick norm map to it. Open GL, but set the intensity like really low, like uh, 0 0.01, something like that. Maybe lower, 0 0.005. It's just going to be like some tiny bit of bass noise. Now on top of this, we need to have like some of this rougher noise, and then we need to have like these little spots that we have in here. The rougher noise looks like it has a little bit of direction to it. So maybe we can use, uh, let's see, BMW spots three or two. We might be able to use one of these. And if we do like a multi, multi-directional warp grayscale over here. Uh, let's see. So we got this one. And now for the warping, we can either use the base or what you can try to do is you can try to add a directional blur. And if you do a direction blur at like a specific angle, like this, it sometimes helps by pushing out. Oh, <laughs> let's set this to minimum. It does not look very good at the first instance. Normally, it helps with like pushing things out a little bit. It might not be working very well for this one. We can also like play out with our angle just to make extra sure. Yeah, you know what? I don't think this is going to work for this one. So let's go ahead and instead have a multi-directional warp and we basically just set the angle and maybe set the angle to like one and then just tone down the intensity to give it like a little bit more space so that could give us some good direction let's have a look in our norm map there we go so that could give us like some good direction already now let's go in here and first of all let's also test out BMW spots number two Okay, so I kind of like BMW spots number one, probably because it has like these little dots. I'm going to give it like the tiniest bit of like a blur high quality grayscale. Be careful for this because it could make things look like they are very low resolution. So 0 0.0205. There's sometimes a clamping point. Seven. Let's do six. So it kind of like softens things out. And then if we blend this together using a BMW Spots 2, which is like this really sharp noise, hopefully, uh, probably it's like a multiplier thing. Let's set the opacity down and then play around with it. Here we go. We can get like some more variation in between here, which in general just gives us like a nice field of like noise. The, the, the thing that's always tricky with this one is that you need to be careful about like the liquid look. Now, I guess one way that you can try to avoid the liquid look even more is to add a slope blur grayscale with like a moisture noise, for example. And often, if you do this, set your samples all the way up and your intensity very low. And maybe set it to like minimum, like 0 0.01 or 2 or maybe 5. No, that's too much. 3. You can see that very softly. Here, it will make things a little bit sharper. So zero, but this is all like super subtle stuff. If I set this to 0 .0, 0 0.1, yeah, you might see it a little bit. But this is all super soft stuff because we are mostly just using this noise to already break it up. Let's set this to 0 0.03. Uh, there we go. So that will give us like some general noise over here. That's good. So we got some bass noise, we got some of the main noise. 
And what you can do is you can add a quick normal combine to combine these two using high quality to make sure that there's always something going on in a texture. So we got now our base noise. Now, if you want to have like this tweaking effect, oh, by the way, first of all, save our scene. We can also create something like that. I'll show you how to do that. So first of all, textures, new folder, this will call plaster. And in here, we will just go ahead and we will save this. And we will most likely again have like a clean and a dirty version. So for the little streak effect that you can see over here, sometimes it is as simple as grabbing a anastrophic noise over here. And I tend to set the Y amount by resolution, which will really like scale it down. And then on the X amount, you can set like the length of them. So let's set the length to around like 10 or maybe a little bit more, maybe like 15. And having this one, so there's a few ways. So we can first of all try a multi-directional warp grayscale. And this can often work, but sometimes you just want to like add some more variations. So let's try this with a uh, Perlin noise over here. Set the Perlin noise quite large. And let's see, directions. If I go one direction. Yeah, here, so that, that does not make the streaks exactly the way that I want. Instead, what you can also do is you can have this one. And if you go ahead and we need to have like something around it to break it up a little bit more. So let's have a... I don't know, I, I tend to, of, it is only it is very expensive. I tend to often just grab like a grunge map and throw it on the brush pattern like this and then push the balance out a little bit. And if we then blend this together, we can make all of the outsides black like this. And then I often use a shape splatter, but I'm not sure if this will work as well this time. Yeah, then I want to probably make my shapes a little bit stronger. So I would often use, uh, which one would be best? Like a tile sampler or, or yeah, maybe let's maybe try a shape splatter. Do, sh do a shape splatter and then go into pattern one and grab this one. Scroll down and turn off height scale auto adjust. Scroll up and just set like the amounts to be quite large like this and then it's just like a matter of throwing up your scale and your scale random also and normally let's go down because there should be like a oh does it not have this mode then we might need to actually use a tile sampler over here i was hoping that it would have like a like a specific mode in that you can see it in just a second which one i mean so if I go up here and do a pattern input, there is this mode that if you blend, it will not blend using an art, which uh, the, the shape sampler is doing right now. So when it like increases over, but instead it will use a, here, yeah, it will go art subtract or it will do max. And right now this one, it seems like it's doing an art subtract, but let's uh, try the shape or the tile sampler, sorry. And first of all, Scale random it a bunch. It's okay if it is like heavily overlapping. That's no problem at all. We just want to scale random it. Then we want to give it like some random position maybe. Uh, maybe not. Let's try first of all random rotation. And I think I need to blur my mask over here. Let's do a blur high quality grayscale. And let's see if we soften that out. Maybe we need to set our anastrophic noise. No, wait, we do not need to set it smaller. Maybe only set the wire mode like a little bit more. And then go in here and then you can go ahead and you can play around with the scaling a little bit more so that we get like these random streaks over here. And now what we can do is we can do like some general Berlin noise directional warp. You can also try it in here, but it does not really work when we have really large shapes. So instead, let's do a or a directional warp or like a multi-directional warp. You can choose yourself. And then throw in that Berlin noise that I was talking about before. Just to give it like a bunch of like uh, random waving. So let's set this to minimum probably. 
and let's set the directions to two or yeah i guess we will we only can do this with the directions of one and that will just give it like some general waving and now you might think like oh god this looks really bad but we are of course going to only use a fraction of this so having this what we can do now is we can add a few things we can first of all add a histogram uh, scan let's do that which can basically give us control over how many we want then what we can do is we can add a quick blur high quality grayscale which can give us control over the sharpness because we do not want to have these very sharp so maybe like 0 0.15 ish and then we basically want to blend this and i guess that we can blend this using the purlin noise maybe uh, maybe if we just create like a new purlin noise that will look better so let's create a new one let's change the random seat and let's make the scaling a little bit bigger and then add like a histogram scan so that you can control a little bit better where the blending will happen and we set this to like subtract or something like that mess around with the scaling a little bit more so that we get like these random lines here and there and then it's just a matter of like messing around with for example your histogram scan all of that kind of stuff to get exactly what you want and then at the end we just do normal there are many ways of course to do this i could try and pinpoint exactly the best way to do this but right now i am also doing this for the first time so i want to show you the organic way of how to figure out how to get like the best effect if you have time i would recommend like playing around with it and trying to get exactly what you want and everything because there are so many ways, like this is one way of doing it. Another way is that you could probably use like your scratch generator over here to create some extra stuff. Another way is that you can use your tile generator along with like a really thin strip of cylinder. As I said, there are so many ways to do the same thing. But anyway, so we got this stuff. We can do a normal combine. Plug this into the top and then you will see that the details... Because they are so small, they do not actually matter that much. So they are just more like in the background at like a 0 0.08 value or something like that. And that's pretty much it. You pretty much plug this into your norm map. Add a frame and just call this normal map. And once we've done that, we can quickly preview it inside of Marmoset. Because the next chapter will be a little bit bigger. Because we are going to go for like... A just a general dirty looking plaster. Maybe I will get some more reference for that. I will do that. I will get some more reference for you guys in the next chapter. But for now, save your scene. Export output says bitmap. Turn on automatic export. Create a folder called final. And let's do another folder called clean. And select. So this is going to just be the clean version. But you can see that you can very quickly generate this really interesting looking noises and everything. And it only needs a norm map in here for now. And then if we tone down our colors that it becomes a little bit easier to see. And tone down our roughness and set our texture tiling to like 2. There you go, see? So you can see that we get like this cool rough looking plaster look. You can see like a little bit of the stripes in between here and you can just in general see like the rougher details and at this point you can always go in here and you can either change all of these values or what you can do is you can add a normal intensity note and this note you should be able to kind of like tone down the intensity as much as you want so let's say that we set this to uh, minus 0 0.3 to make it less intense because it is plaster i don't want to have this super intense looking normal but now you can see that it is a little bit less intense and just in general it is looking cool so we can save our scene and in the next chapter what we will do is we will focus on our base color so let's go ahead and continue with that